All right, so let's move on now. Let's say it's time to put a mission or purpose statement beneath our address here. So we enter down just to move this on a different line and say, my goal after graduating, I'm assuming you're a student, um, is to uh, uh, become a great data analyst. I don't know. That sounds pretty boring, right? It's actually a pretty awesome field. Um, I teach a advanced data analytics course as well. Um, intro and advanced courses, but uh, I'm getting off topic. So you're gonna expand this into something cool. We save it. Uh, we always like to start our resumes out with something like that. This is my goal and purpose. Um, I plan, uh, yeah, I'll, st I'll start with that. So we come back here to our resume site. We refresh it, we remember, oh yeah, crap. I gotta break this down a couple lines. So is that the best thing to do, just to add a couple more line breaks? Well, let me show you another tag that's very useful. So P stands for paragraph. So a P tag does absolutely nothing to the style of the text, like H4 bolds it. But a P simply says that add a double space after whatever comes in between here. So like in business documents, when we have separate paragraphs, rather than tabbing in the paragraph, we typically just add a double space between the paragraphs. So come back here and save that. And even though I don't have a line break after Provo Utah 84604, see there's nothing right here, a P will also make sure that it's double spaced from whatever content comes before it, and as well as any content that comes after it. If I put something here, even if it's on the very next line, something here even on the very next line, and there's no tag wrapped around that at all, it's still going to double space it down because there's a P before a beginning and ending around this text right here. So I'm gonna delete that. We've got our uh, information, um, uh, some type of purpose or mission statement. I like, let's put that on here. Next, it's time for us to start listing out our resume qualities. Where should we begin? Um, actually, no, I changed my mind. You know what we really need is an image. So let's come up here and before our mission statement but after eh, no i think we should really put our image before even our name up here at the top right so come right here uh, html does process code serially meaning in order so whatever i put here is going to come above or before the h4 now we're going to totally break those rules later with css but for now just know that assuming all other elements being equal, it's gonna put whatever shows up at the top at the top and so forth. So next I want you to learn the image tag, IMG. This is the first time where we're gonna learn that HTML elements or tags can also have what we call attributes. So image, as I close that, you'll notice it did not automatically click, create a, an ending tag like some of our others did. That's because like a line break, an image is a single tag element. There's not really a beginning and an ending to an image. There's just an image there. The beginning and end is inherently characterized by the size and the actual pixels in the image. But what we do need is to customize this tag so that it knows, one, what the image is, where we're getting it from, but also how big it should be. And there's a few other elements. So this is a great time to learn attributes. First attribute, uh, the way we, we add all attributes is we come here after the element name and before the greater than sign that closes the tag, add a space. And I was hoping it would bring up, it looks like it didn't, a list of all possible attributes. That's okay, let's start by typing in the most important one, S, okay, as soon as I type there, now it brings it up. SRC, or source. So notice as I started typing this, the nice thing is uh, I hit R, whatever one is highlighted, if I hit enter, automatically puts the next thing that's required. After each attribute name, the name of the attribute is source, it's going to add an equal sign and then open, close, double quote. Okay, every attribute must use that equal sign, open, close, double quote, and notice there's no spaces between the equals and the double quote. That's standard HTML5. So it's gonna put, uh, at least my editor is gonna color code attributes slightly different shade than the element name. If you're using brackets or sublime text or something else, it probably will as well. But what goes right here, any guesses? it's going to be the address to the image that we want to put on our page. Now there's a couple ways of putting that address in here. Um, by the way, just save it for now and come back here and refresh your image page and see what happens. There's a space here because it knows 
that we want to put an image, but it doesn't know where the image is coming from. All right, so let's go and find that image. And I'll show you those two ways. Let's go to images.google.com or wherever uh, you want to get an image from. And let's you learn first how to embed an image from another website using a URL. So I'm going to type in Homer Simpson. Grab a perfect image right here. So again, come to Google Images, find some image you like. Uh, we're going to right click on the image and in Google Images, you have to get to this view of it. Um, uh, we might know, we might even have to go all the way to the site where the image is located by clicking on that link. Now I'm gonna right click and say, uh, no, let me go even deeper, there we go. Right click, copy image address. So when I copy the image address, it's going to put in memory. Now, oops, let's go back to uh, our editor. And right here, in between the open and close double quotes, I'm going to paste image address. So this is the website location of where the image is. Save that and come back to your web page and refresh it. And it pulls that image in, in the original size it came in. So if yours was a gigantic size, it could be huge. But there's advantages and disadvantages of using this technique. By referring to an image on another website, the advantage is I don't have to use up my own resources to save it and to store it. That's awesome. The disadvantage is what? Can you guess? Well, it's that if whoever owns this website decides to move the location of that image, then all of a sudden my website will break and it'll go back to having no image here at all. So I'm putting a bit of risk uh, I'm accepting some risk by making my website depend on the dependability of somebody else, which I typically don't do unless I'm required to uh, by copyright laws or something like that. So instead, here's how we're going to do it. Come back here to our image. Let me go back to it again here. This time, right click and instead of copying image address, let's save image as. I'm going to go to my website folder where I put my resume.html file. And I'm also gonna change the name that I save it as because I want it to be as simple as possible. So I'm just gonna call it Homer. And the original format it came in was a PNG. Now there's lots of different image types that will work on a web page. PNG is currently the favorite. It's not necessarily the smallest size, but it's the most reliable. Uh, well, depending on a few factors. You might also find a GIF, a JPG, a JPEG, um, anyway, uh, we won't get into all the differences now, but you can use any of those. And I'm just going to hit save and put it in that same folder. Now, as a reminder, here's my website. I now have my web page and that image I just saved both. They need to be both in the same folder for now. Make sure those are together. Once you've done that, come back here to the code. And we're going to delete this from it. And instead, we're going to type in, oh, look, by the way, there it showed up now in my editor. It sees that I saved it to this folder. So I'm going to change this to homer.png. So as long as these two files are sibling elements, so uh, I didn't use that term before. Image is now a child of body, right? Because it's directly inside of body. H4 and image are sibling elements because they're both children of body. So I make sure that they're tabbed in to the same level. Now this content is also a child of body and a sibling to these elements. So it's tabbed in at the same level. As long as um, two, web, uh, two files in a website are sibling files, meaning they're both in the same folder, I can refer to one from the other by simply using its name, just like that. Now, later on, when we learn uh, about folder navigation, that's not going to be true, and I'll show you how we'll break and refix links when they're in different folders. But for now, just make sure they're in the same folder, save it, and go back here. And once again, we should refresh, and the image is still there. All right. That's it for... Oh, no, it's that's not it. I want to show you a couple of other attributes. So you can use more than one attribute in an element. In the case of image, we probably want a different size for that image if it's too big. So we have a couple of other attributes. Height and width, we're only going to set one of those two for now because browsers will automatically keep the scale of the image. So if I change one of them, it'll automatically adjust the other uh, to keep the scale of the image. 
So take your pick. It doesn't matter. I, I think I'm going to stick with height, though. Enter. And I'm going to set this equal to 150. And honestly, I can't remember if I'm supposed to include pixels or not. Let's not include it. It should work fine, but then let's validate our code to see if that's right. So there we go. See how it automatically adjusts it to 150 pixels and the scale as well. So let's now go back here and copy our code. Go back to validator.w3.org. Select uh, validate by direct input. Paste all of our code in there and check it. All right, here we go. L um, an error. So the error that it found is one that I'm about to show you in a second, but it, it's, it says the image element must have an alt attribute except under certain conditions. For details, see this right here. So the problem it found had nothing to do with me not using PX. It's with a, another attribute that's missing. So let me show you that one now. There's one more attribute we need. Come on, click off there. There we go. My mouse is running out of batteries. All right, so... Again, re recall that when we have more than one attribute, we have to separate them by a space. So we have the source attribute, space height attribute, space alt, which stands for alternate text. So uh, and here is where you want to put a description of the image. So uh, my picture. A better thing to put would be your name, something like that portrait describing what the image is or something like that. So re save it. Let's go back and refresh the page. That text didn't show up anywhere. Any guesses where it might be? Hmm. Well, let me show you. Let's say that I was still using that URL uh, version of the image source and they did move their picture so it no longer existed. Or Let's say uh, somehow someone come here and edit my code and misspelled Homer with two M's. Well, there is no image called H-O-M-M-E-R. It doesn't exist. So what's going to happen? Well, back here, when I refresh the page, my image is gone because the, the link is broken. But instead, it shows the text of what was supposed to be there, the alternate text. So if your image links break, at least someone gets a text description of what's there. But it also serves at least two other good purposes that I can think of. Let me go back to fixing that. First, uh, if um, uh, visually impaired uh, consumers are looking at your website, they'll often use a screen reader. And this is a piece of software that will go through and read all the text on a website to them and tell them what's on there. Well, you can't read a picture, right? So what does it say? Well, a screen reader will actually look at your HTML code and search for an alt tag and then it'll read what's in the alt tag to the disabled person so that they know what that is an image of. So that's one great reason for having an alt and partly why it's required by the W3C. Another great reason for using it is for search engine optimization. So if this were a website about uh, um, jewelry and we're selling jewelry, if I want my website to show up in search results higher up, I'm gonna to to use the word jewelry several places in my text. In addition, I'll use keywords that I want to be searched on in places like alt tags and attributes because the Google algorithm and Bing and others will pay attention to not just the text on the page, but hidden metadata or data about data, like an alt tag and look for keywords that show up there as well. So use very descriptive alt attributes for to, uh, to help those who are impaired to improve your search engine positioning and to help yourself out in case your image link breaks. All right, that's it for images and your first introduction to attributes.